Hi, today I'm going to be demonstrating the use of our FMCW presence detection radar in a typical application on the road. This is a FMCW radar that can range to six different targets on the road when mounted in a side fire configuration. Don't be fooled by its small size. There is a lot of electronics and software in this product. You mount this radar on the side of the road and then you set up six, up to six different lanes and it can detect targets in each of those lanes and then you can map those to six different trigger outputs. This open frame version is also available in a weatherproof flange mounted radar, IP68, it's a potted enclosure. Typically it has a Molex connector on the output that would go through a cut in your enclosure and typically terminate in an IO connector board. This simple IO connector board breaks the Molex connector out into a DB9 for RS-232, either to a PC connection or a Bluetooth dongle, power screw terminals, trigger output screw terminals, as well as gives you two indicator lights that two out of your six trigger outputs have been activated. If you need to use more than two trigger outputs, then you would make yourself a different breakout board or break this cable out right here at this connector. This product is also available in a completely weatherproof IP67 enclosure, which does not require to be mounted against an enclosure or a flange. And this can be mounted simply with a U-channel type of a bracket or a U-bracket, as well as you can do your own field mounting, bring those in through a cable gland. Finally, our IO connector board is available with a few different options. A high power isolated AC relay option or a DC MOSFET option in case you need to trigger higher power loads. We also offer a Houston Radar Bluetooth dongle. This is a long range dongle. Typically it'll operate, it'll, it'll connect out to over 500 feet. And then once you connect, use this Bluetooth dongle, then you can use our free Android app and configure the radar and set up lanes and the trigger output in the field. Thus you do not need to take a Windows computer with you. Okay, so here we have a simple setup where we've set up a PD300 junction box on the mast of this trailer. We've connected that to a I.O. board and then the trigger output on the I.O. board we've rigged up to turn on that lamp. So whenever the radar detects something in the closer lane of this exit of this driveway, it's going to trigger the lamp and whenever it detects something in this incoming lane or the further lane, it will not trigger them. So let's see this setup in action. Whenever a truck tries to exit this driveway closer to the radar, the radar will detect it and trigger the lamp. And whenever the truck comes in further away from the radar, trying to come in, it will not uh, trigger the lamp. So the radar is now detecting the vehicle and as long as the vehicle is standing there, it's detecting it and keeping the output triggered. So it's a true presence detection radar. You can also set a hold time on the trigger output. So in case, for example, you wanted the output to be triggered a number of seconds past the trigger point, it will keep the lamp on or the trigger active and then turn itself off as long as there's nothing within the detection ranges. Now John, who's helping me out here do this demonstration, is gonna drive in in the lane that is further away from the radar and we have set up a lane not to trigger at that distance and as you can see the radar did not trigger. So you can set up six such lanes at different start and stop distances and map those to six such trigger outputs out to over 100 feet from the radar. And we have a newer model, the PD420, that can detect targets up to 350 feet out. Let's do a demonstration again. Again, John drives in on the exit lane. This could be a work zone, for example, or it could be a driveway that you are monitoring for presence of targets or vehicles. And then the radar will detect it and trigger the output. And again, on the other side, coming in, we've set the lane to be, to terminate approximately in the middle of this driveway. And when John comes in further away from the radar, past the center line of the driveway. The radar is detecting the truck, but there is no trigger lane set up, there is no output map, and hence it will not trigger.
Okay, we shall now configure the radar and set up the lanes and other parameters that can be set. I'm going to be connecting to it, uh, the radar, by clicking on the Connect to Radar button, which will launch the Connect to Radar window. In this case, I know it's on COM14, so it's much quicker and easier to find it this way. So the radar has been found. Some information about the firmware and the radar hardware is available. You can simply click OK and get past that. It also or click past the OK of the radar found dialog. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to click over to the setup page. It says PD300 setup. So the first thing to notice is that they have there are three different operating modes. The highway side fire operating mode is for counting applications in free flowing traffic. The application that we are going to be demonstrating is a truck presence detection application where trucks are exiting a work zone, for example, and you want to detect them at a certain location right before they get on a road or get on a highway. So in this, we would be using it in an intersection application. Intersection application essentially tells the radar that it needs to be looking for stopped vehicles and the sensitivity of the radar is increased. If you have very little setback, which is the distance from the radar face to the object being detected, you can go ahead and select the zero setback mode. But if you have at least, let's say 10 feet setback or eight feet setback, then it, they recommend it to set it to intersection mode. We recommend not changing the detection sensitivity unless you discuss your requirements with us. So just leave it at 100%. The background clutter compensation time constant uh, depends on how long a target would be present in front of the radar. The default should be sufficient. You can increase these to 15 or 20 minutes if you like. Uh, if you expect a target to be sitting in front of the radar and you want the radar to be picking it up uh, for tens of minutes at a time. The longer the time constant, the slower any movement in the background will be accommodated into the background. It typically takes four to five time constants for a change in the background to be accommodated and disappear from the detection in the radar. So you do not want to make this too long. Uh, if you make this too short, for example, five seconds or 10 seconds, then a vehicle that may be standing in front of the radar for 20 or 30 or 40 seconds will disappear into the background and will no longer be detected. So again, a time constant of the order of 5, 10 or 15 minutes is usually sufficient. For counting applications, we recommend that you set this option of the background clutter compensation algorithm to asymmetric. But again, we are going to be demonstrating a presence detection application today. So I will set this to symmetric which is optimal for long presence detection. Let's move on over to the triggering. So today we are just going to have one lamp set to trigger one output, in which case I will say the trigger one should be triggered by lane one, and I will demonstrate that. And then you can just ignore the other outputs. Since the lamp is going to be turned on when the output goes low, we want an active low, which means when a target is detected in the lane, the output will be pulled low and then the current will go through the lamp and activate the lamp. You can also select the, tar the uh, trigger output to be active high, in which case the output will be released and then you need to provide a 5 or a 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistor for the output to be pulled high. This typically would be if you're going into a PLC or a DCS where you require a high going output on detection. If you want the output to be held a certain number of seconds, then you can enter a non-zero value in trigger output hold. And then once the trigger is detected, it will be held regardless whether or not the trigger is gone away for those many seconds. And then this other information is for counting uh, output applications. Let's come back to the initial, initialize clutter button. This is a very important button in the setup of the radar. You want to initialize the clutter after you have finished making all physical changes to your setup. What the initialize clutter does is it tells the radar that whatever is in front of the radar is of no interest to your detection. So curbs, trees, signs that may be currently being detected or even ground reflections are learned into the clutter and then the clutter is updated based on the time constant specified here in the uh, background clutter compensation. So let's go ahead and uh, click initialize clutter because we have finished setting up the physical uh, trailer on, on the driveway. And so now all the targets that may have been detected will disappear. So let's click over to the PD300 plot 
and then show you that there are no targets appearing. A target would appear here in the form of like a red trace. So I'm moving the radar right now and then these targets are appearing. However, no lanes are defined, so no output is being triggered. To define a lane, you simply click this menu, hamburger menu over here, and say define new lane. In which case, this cursor changes to a lane boundary, and then you can simply pick either where the targets are appearing, where you want to detect, or simply based on feet, or if your units are set to meters, then in meters. So in this current application, we have a very close-up detection. I'm going to set the radar to detect from let's say five feet onwards and only a short detection width of maybe uh, five feet approximately so five to ten feet and this lane number one has been saved in this application we only want to detect the closer lane and just one lane only so i'm not going to be setting up other lanes however you can set up to six different lanes so we can go to edit lanes and you can see that this window pops up in which six different lanes can be set up and as you can see that all the other lanes are set to zero, so essentially they are inoperable. The lane direction indicator can be ignored in a single beam radar, since the radar is simply detecting the presence of a vehicle rather than the direction of the vehicle. Lane direction comes into play if you have a dual beam radar that can discriminate between a left moving or a right moving target. So in this application, we will simply ignore this. We will probably remove this in a future uh, version of this software. So I can just simply click OK, and then it just says that all my lanes have been saved. This radar can detect out to over 100 feet from the face of the radar. And since we have a very narrow lane defined very close to the radar, and let's say you wanted to have a little bit better view of the setup, I can go back to the hamburger menu and say zoom in y-axis, and again simply say select the range I want to zoom in, and simply now I've zoomed into this lane. So I think we are done with the radar setup. Let's make sure that we save it. Again, you do not uh, want to forget saving these changes. So let's say save, and then the radar is safe. We will uh, tell the software to reboot and reconnect, in which case it will re uh, reboot the radar and then automatically reconnect after a few seconds. And now it's found it again, and all the settings are now saved. Just to double check that, what we will do is we will go over to the PD300 setup and we notice that the mode is still intersection, and then obviously we didn't make any other changes. And then let's double check the lane is still there, and as you can see, the lane is there. And these other targets are appearing uh, in the background because there's been some movement of the trailer. But again, no lane is being triggered, as you can see, because these targets are outside of the lane. If you wanted to see the lane being triggered, I can simply move this lane over, edit the lane, and say, move the lane over a little bit, the ending, to make sure the target is within the lane. I'll say OK. And now you can see that the output one has been triggered. And then there's a target in lane one. Let's move that back, because we do not want to be detecting that far away. So we only want to be detecting about 10 feet away. So I'll move it over. And now, even though the target is there, the output is no longer be triggered. So you can set six completely separate start and stop zones or lanes in this radar and map those to six different outputs. Now let's take a look to see how this works in the real world. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from now from the PC. I, my PC does not need to be connected to the radar for the radar to function.